Hey guys, long time no talk. I am here with a new prep video that shows how I've been prepping for the ferrets this past month. I decided to switch to a more convenient way of feeding, prepping for a week at a time. I could do longer, but I currently prep for two weeks for my family dog. So there is really not much space left in my freezer. And also I will link those containers in the description. They are reusable and dishwasher safe, much better than using plastic baggies like I was doing. The first thing I'm prepping today is Cornish Hen. This is a great meaty bone source for ferrets. It's very similar to chicken, but smaller in size, and my ferrets love it. Um, to many ferrets, it doesn't really taste exactly like chicken, though, because there are ferrets, I've met many of them, who adore chicken yet don't like Cornish Hen and vice versa, so clearly it tastes a little bit different for them. But one Cornish hen only makes maybe two to two and a half meals for my ferrets right now. They finished a whole Cornish hen in two meals. Um, they're ravenous animals. <laughs> but um, Cornish hen is still pretty good um, to use in their meal plan in here. We have quail, which makes up a large portion of their diet right now. And there's Sedona waiting for anything to fall off the counter. This quail comes in a pack of six and does not contain organs. A pack of quails generally makes like three to four meals in a week for my ferrets and so I usually buy one pack for each week in the month, so four packs total. And yeah, it's just a really, really good meaty bone source for them. It's really soft, really easy to cut. And also, please do not judge my butchering skills. I am not an expert. <laughs> I'm cutting things for my animals, not for myself. So I'm not the best and I'm pretty sloppy. So please do not judge me butchers out there. <laughs> but yeah, quail is awesome. I do suggest adding it to your meal plan if you don't already. And so here I'm just gonna fill in. As you can see, um, I put two meals in one container. Um, so one container is an entire day's worth of food for my ferrets. And I'm just eyeballing it because I've gotten you know pretty used to doing this and prepping their food. I really should just keep using the scale just because I have it and <laughs> to be accurate, because you know, over time, my eyeballing skills you know deteriorates but so i'm gonna get back to using the scale but right now i just kind of use my eyeball skills and it tends to be fairly accurate if i do say so myself and i also clearly haven't planned out the meals ahead of time because you can see me like contemplating where i want to put what um it's really really fun <laughs> i actually really enjoy meal prepping now I didn't think I would enjoy prepping this way because I do like to make their food before feeding at every meal, but this has been good. Okay, so now we move on to duck. Now this is some really good quality stuff um, I got at the market, as you can see by the rich texture uh, color of the meat. Um, the darker it is, generally the more nutritious it is for duck. And it's a lot harder to cut <laughs> because there is a thick layer of skin and fat. Uh, most ducks have that, and it can be hard to cut through sometimes. And so this is the frame of the duck. It was whole and contained the feet, head, and organs, which I already fed to both the dog and the ferrets. So I'm just going to fill in some spots here that needs more meaty bone. And this duck didn't really give me too many meals, maybe like two. Um, out of the frame I had left, but it's still really really good um, Additive in their meal plan because this duck in particular is very high quality. Okay So the next Item that I wanted to show here I wanted to do a disclaimer because pork bones in whole form are generally too dense to f For ferrets. However, my ferrets can tolerate and enjoy pork spare ribs that are cut into bite-sized pieces I use these to fill the gaps in some of the meals to bulk them up. As you can see, you know, some of the quail and duck didn't really make whole meals, um, so I need to just add something else, you know, for variety purposes and to bulk up the meal a little bit with something extra nutritious. So I just wanted to add that disclaimer because pork and beef in whole form is not generally consumable for ferrets. It's just way too dense and not meaty enough. But uh, the pork spare ribs that I get are super meaty. The bone is really, really soft. I can easily cut through it. I can even cut through it with my poultry shears. Okay. 
So this is just some extra chicken drums and feet. Um, eventually I'll show the feet, but uh, extra chicken drums that I had laying around. Um, and I just figured, you know, <laughs> I didn't label the bag, so I just sawed it and it turned out to be chicken drums. Um, surprise! So I am portioning it and feeding it. This is considered meaty bone. The bulk of the diet for my ferrets are meaty bone. I do a balance over time in the week. They are not huge fans of poultry feet, so I always mix it up with something that I know that they like. It's always good to feed poultry feet alongside other meat anyways because it can be quite dense on its own, very bone heavy, um, so I don't generally recommend feeding poultry feet on its own to ferrets um, because it can create a little bit of constipation because it is very bone heavy. And then here's just an extra quail that I had laying around from the last prep, so I'm just going to quickly cut this up and give them some more quail because why not and i just i love feeding quail it's so easy to cut as you can see it's very satisfying especially pro tip when it's semi-frozen um, a lot of this stuff is semi-frozen and it's just super easy to cut okay so now we move on to the two meals of organs in the week for my ferrets that consist of heart liver and other secreting organs like kidney brain thymus right now i have kidney uh, for one meal i'm using chicken hearts and then that's the pork heart that i'm cutting right now they do prefer the chicken hearts they're just you know perfect tiny bite-sized pieces and they're very very yummy um, so they don't really like the pork heart that much but i use it for variety sake So here we have pork kidney. Um, this is what I'm using for my other secreting organ source right now because it's I haven't really found a, another local source that I can get um, pastured, grass-fed uh, organs from other animals because also Momo is allergic to most hoofed animals, but she can tolerate pork. So it's a little bit hard to find like pork brains <laughs> nearby and pork thymus and whatnot. So. Um, I have to just settle with pork kidney for right now. And this is some chicken liver. Um, it's a new brand that I'm trying out in the ferrets. I actually really, really like this. It's air chilled liver and they just, they really, really like this. Um, it's really rich. Uh, the color is really dark. It's also just a good all around liver to feed ferrets. Um, I usually do either chicken or turkey and rabbit if I can get my hands on some as well. So again, I have two organ meals that I feed in the week for my ferrets that contain their weekly allowances or requirements um, in two different meals. This is just some extra Cornish hen from the last prep, and yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just Cornish hen, the same thing that I've showed before, but this is some uh, Ground Lake white fish, which I got from here today. I don't believe they sell it anymore, but um, this is going to be their fish source for the week. I generally like to store fish separately from meat, as some species contains a thiamine depleter called thiaminase. It's an enzyme. And if stored together, it can start leaching the thiamine from meat. So this week I am storing the fish in there just because it's only for a few days and they get plenty of thiamine from the rest of their diet. Um, so there, I just cut up some New Zealand Greenland mussel, which I feed for dietary manganese and fatty acids, and oysters, which I feed mainly for zinc and some other good health benefits. They're just super, super yummy and really, really healthy for your ferrets. Um, these should be cooked uh, prior to feeding. I buy canned in water, no salt added for the oysters, so I don't need to cook. And the green lip mussels are, if they're sold half shell or no shell, they've already been cooked. Um, I do highly suggest adding these to your ferret's diet. And you can read more about raw feeding on my blog. I have an entire post on just the ultimate nutrition guide for ferrets. I also have a video version on my channel and that's just a really good place to start if you do not know where to start and you're just super confused about this whole raw feeding thing. But anyways, thank you guys for watching my prep video. I will see you guys again shortly. I promise I'll start making videos again soon and I hope you have a great day and don't forget to subscribe. Bye guys!